Seems to have caught a mild case of madness this morning. You were right when you said that this was our chance. I was. I propose we make a commotion, lure out the Templar-controlled British Indies Company. And do what? Put yourself in the line of fire? I need to send Ellsworth a message. This won't be over until we can draw him out. This is something I must do. I will make a scene, and then you need to wrap them up a little. Well, that shouldn't be a problem. I've heard you Templars are a bunch of pansies. Here we go. Send a message to Ellsworth. I'll do anything! Tell him to meet me at Lambert no. Cemetery tonight no. and tell him to come been alone. Murdered. There's been a murder! Someone's been killed! Oh, help! Help! Meet me tonight at Lambert Cemetery. He'll never come alone, even if I ask him to. quite a commotion. He's gone mad. Greeny was right. He isn't mad, Jacob. He's trying to take action. To do the right thing. Oh, never mind. I'll take it from here. Fine by me. I could use a good pint right about now. I was expecting Jacob, but I'm glad it's you who have come. He thinks you've gone mad. I probably have. What's your plan? I've asked Brinley to meet me here alone. In turn, 
He, of course, has sent a small army to secure the area. I need you to get rid of them and meet me back here. It's essential that when Brinley does arrive, I have him to myself. Understood. Whatever happens, do not panic. Why, Gov? Oh. Let's go. There you go.
That'll certainly help quite a bit, thank you. He's here. I must talk to him. Don't be absurd. This is dangerous. Miss Fry, this is something I must do, and I must do it alone. Remain hidden. I cannot afford to have him see you. You can't escape me forever, Your Highness. Come out and face me. I told you to meet me here alone. I'm not as silly as I once was, Singh. That'll be all. I wouldn't dare come to this meeting place alone. Not with your recently acquired friends. I am alone, Elspeth. It doesn't have to be like this. You can't just walk this earth like a free man. You are nothing more than a trope. Stag's head above a mantelpiece. You've caused enough commotion as it is. It's time to put an end to this. You will kill me now. You will be a one day oh, well, well, Imagine the uprising when they find out the only son of Ranjit Singh has been murdered. <laughs> you think they remember you? You are a lost soul. A monarch who has abandoned his people. You are nothing. We were such good friends. Friends? <laughs> you were no more than a plaything. A prisoner in prince's clothing. You're lucky to be alive. We have a problem! I admit, I was surprised they let you live. You no, no, listen. No, I've had enough of this. I knew you were lying. Oh. No, you mustn't! He will kill you! This is what I was sent here for. Be done with it, girl! I shall never forfeit my own mission. I will not allow it. The Loggins, the company, they all wanted your silence. Whether you spare me or end me, you won't escape the fate they have planned for you. It seems you have learnt nothing of India, of its people. But killing you? That is something I cannot do. It would make me no better than the cursed, oppressive company you work for. Yeah. You will die as you were raised, Singh. You'll never be more than a, a trophy of war. We will bury you in English soil. <laughs> you have done me much good. I am heavily indebted to you both. We are happy to help. I fear that I cannot continue handling things in this manner. The assassin way is not my way. As helpful as you have been. This empire, this land, my people. The problem is so much bigger than death. I know I must devote my life to this cause. To put India, my home, back onto the map. Return it to its people. It's a long and grueling journey, but it is something I must do. Even if it takes me to my own death. We understand, Your Highness. But if you do change your mind, you know where to find us. That I do. Thank you, assassins. Hopefully we never shall meet again.
Delighted to see you again, Miss Fry. Your Highness, the plans detailing the renovations to Buckingham Palace have gone astray. I suppose you will have to make do with the copies. There are copies? Where? Uh, not so fast. First, I have a matter of some urgency. Carrying out my plan would require stealth and speed, qualities I know you possess. Time is of the essence, Your Highness. Then make this quick, my dear. The most influential men in Parliament remain beyond my reach. But these very men have sent for carriages to prepare for the ball tonight. Acquire an official carriage, and we shall drive the politicians to their destinations. Along the way, I will meet with them. And afterward, I shall tell you where to find the plans. You're a shrewd negotiator. One well, must be when one is so often underestimated. Don't allow personal feelings to compromise the mission. What a mistake. There you are. Out of girl. Easy, easy. Shall we lobby our cause? Here now. Spry? Climb up, Your Highness. Where are we headed? Belgrave Square. Welcome, sir. Your Highness, what a surprise! <laughs> Is life not about embracing the unexpected? I shall take but a few moments of your time. A matter of utmost importance must be discussed. When the Commonwealth seized the Punjab from my people... It was not a seizure, but a rightful transaction. Britain promised to protect me. 
by robbing me of my kingdom, Parliament acted in violation of the treaty signed with my family. Here, read it. I... I was not aware. Read. That is all I ask. You are one of the few in a position to help. I will do what I can. Thank you, sir. I trust you and your son will enjoy the ball this evening. He is newly returned from Delhi. I will share what we have discussed. It is most disconcerting. Get your paper. The next best thing to attend... That proved quite valuable. Where to now? St. James's Park. I noticed Mr. Green did not accompany you. He has other things to attend to. Ah, a pity. You two seem to get along nicely. Well, that was a problem, you see. One must not allow our personal feelings to compromise one's mission. That sounds like a quotation. It is. From my father. Ethan Fry. You knew him? No, unfortunately. But Mr. Green spoke of him. He sounded like an extraordinary man. He was, Your Highness. And your mother as well, Cecily Fry. She and your father were partners, inseparable. The only duo that came close to challenging Mr. Starrick. And very much in love, at least from the small amount I have been told. Cecily. I wish I could have met her. From what Mr. Green gathered, you share much in common. Your intelligence, for one. Father never spoke of her. What would Mr. Green do? He was only a boy when he trained with my father. Children can be quite perceptive, Miss Fry. <laughs> yes, sir. Good day, sir. Why, what are you doing here, Your Highness? I know how busy your days have been of late. A few moments of your time is all I require. This is all rather unorthodox, but continue. Britain was to protect me according to the treaty my family signed. Instead, she took my land. And now I hear Britain intends to strengthen her ties to India. Perhaps it is time to return the Punjab to her people. The Queen has supplied you with an annual income for God knows how long, and now you buy the hand that feeds you? It is not a matter of money. I cannot stand idle and watch my homeland subjected to the yoke of an outsider's rule. My people are treated as slaves. I will die poor a thousand times over if only to see them free. Your passion moves me, Your Highness. What would you have me do? Take this copy of the wrongful treaty and defend my claim to the throne. Help disengage the Punjab from British rule. I shall speak up, but I am only one voice. I cannot promise anything but a show of support. That is more than enough. Thank you, sir. Good day, sir. May God bless you. Only one more remains, to the Gladstone residence. Do you miss India? I remember that my mother smelled of cinnamon. And when she cradled me in her arms in the summer heat, I would hold so still that she fell asleep. When I lost my kingdom, it hurt. But truly, when they took my mother away, I saw her again two years before she died. The summer long since faded. I miss her. I miss India. I love India because I love my mother. Will you ever return? I have petitioned the government several times, but they withhold their permission. Do not be fooled by appearances, Miss Fry. I am in many ways a prisoner. Perhaps we may work together more closely for your cause in the future. I would like that very much, Miss Fry. This day is a disaster. To the sleeping house, straight away.
Good day, Mr. Gladstone. Mr. Singh! You are a hard man to pin down. I know what this is about. Your politics have worn off. Your Majesty is tired of you. So now you come begging for scraps. You wound me deeply, sir. My people deserve freedom. I am here to fight for them. Why did you lose the Punjab? I shall tell you, Your Highness. We were outgunned, outmaneuvered, and simply outclassed. Yes, the Sikhs deserve freedom. I hope with British help and progress, they shall achieve it. Then why do they cry out for their king? Britain has a duty to bring about peace. It is an enormous responsibility, and I value your guidance and advice, along with that of Parliament. But it's our burden to rule India. And certainly not the duty of a forgotten leader who has not seen his country for 20 years. I apologize for being so frank, but one must not tell lies to a king. Your honesty is most enlightening. When I become Prime Minister, I intend to push for peace. But it will be a long and slow process. And I am afraid I can almost guarantee you will never see India again. If my people are free, then my imprisonment shall be no burden. Perhaps your idealism is real. Although, after observing the tigers wandering the grounds of your lush, expensive estate, forgive me for doubting it. Easy. Much luck, Your Highness, with your lobbying. I hope my advice has done some good. Far more than your policies thus far. But I hold out hope that you will make progress. My people are counting on it. Thank you, Miss Fry, for forwarding my cause. Oh, you are welcome. I hope some good comes of it, despite Mr. Gladstone's vitriol. Those of us with the largest hearts protect them the most. Your father, for instance. From what I understand, he was extraordinarily sad. Broken, even, after your mother's passing. That kind of pain can blind us. Cause us to say outlandish things to protect the ones we love. It's time you returned this carriage and recovered those plans. They are located in Buckingham Palace. The Queen keeps them among her personal papers in the white drawing room. I wish you a good evening. Miss Evie Fry. And to you, Your Highness. Evie, nice to see you again. Slow down. There you are. That's it. Atta girl. A little the worse for wear. Where does she think she's going? That's way too far. Yes. <laughs> 